Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Placement. In this module, we will explore component placement and methods to aid their placement on the PC board. Looking at the PCB after we have performed the design update from the schematics, we see a number of things. The components, obviously, and the rooms that were auto-generated, each room having all of the components from the particular schematic sheet. As a quick review, we have a two-signal layer board. The PCB board shape is a basic one created by hand and the rules were either generated from the schematics and transferred during the design update process or are a part of the typical default rule set. Looking at the full view, we can utilize the room to move all of the components from a particular schematic page. This is a good way to start the PCB placement. We simply left click on the room and hold it down as we move the room using the mouse. Like with the schematic symbols, while moving a room, if you tap the space bar, the room will rotate counterclockwise, or if you hold control and tap the space bar, it rotates clockwise. Using the combination of moving and rotating, we can roughly place the components on the PCB using their rooms. Using rooms for the basic placement is a good start. The rooms can be redimensioned for a better fit within the PCB. To resize a room, left click on it to select it. Now with it highlighted, you should see the end and middle point markers. If you select a corner marker, you can increase both its length and width, or a middle marker to move that side out or in. Once resized, Altium can reposition the room's components using the Tools, pull down tab, Component Placement, and selecting Arrange Within Room. And then with the mouse having a large active cross, click on each room to have its components move to within its boundaries. Right-click to escape to exit the mode. When finished with the basic placement using rooms, I generally delete them. But if you prefer, they can be hidden using the View Configuration panel. Click on the View Options tab, and then click on the eye icon for the rooms to hide them. If you hide the rooms, the online DRC will still complain if the room's components are outside of the now hidden room. That is why I said I normally delete the room after it served me well in the initial placement phase. Now with the rough placement done, we can start the finer grained placement effort. Clicking on a component selects it, as we can see that it's highlighted. Now we can move it using the mouse by holding the left mouse button down and starting to move. As with the schematic symbols, we can tap the space bar for rotations, either counterclockwise or if you hold down the control key and clock the space bar clockwise. One helpful technique to use is grid settings to speed up component placements that require a fixed spacing. We will use a combination of grids for spacing and setting of the origin to provide fixed physical spacing for the three rows of the PWM style connectors. As you recall, these are from the digital IO schematic. Let's move some components out of the way for better visibility. Starting with the ground connector, left-clicking on it to select it. Now move it and place it on the outer edge. Now we want to set the origin, so use the Edit pull-down menu, select Origin, and Set to temporarily set the origin to pin one of the connector. At this point, everything is now referenced to this point as 0, 0. Setting the grid to 100 mil will allow us to place the power and signal connectors 100 mil spacing away from each other. This 100 mil three row spacing allows PWM cables to properly connect. You can select and move the reference designators as well. Notice the components associated with the selected text highlight. Now we can move the origin back to the corner of the board as well as reset the grid. Often it's convenient to move a group of components. To move a group we must first select them. Group selection can be done in a number of ways. I prefer to hold the left mouse button down and draw out a rectangle to select the components. What happens if you select more than you intended? Simply hold the shift key down and left click with the mouse on the component to unselect it. If you missed a component, hold the shift key down and then left mouse click on it to add it to the selected group. As you can see, there are a number of ways to select from the edit pull down select menu. In addition, there's also a deselect submenu, offering numerous options. 
Selecting a group and then using the Edit Deselect Inside area allows us to tune our selection. Here is the Select Outside area. I would encourage you to try the various options. You might find a favorite or two along the way. Another method that is handy uses a shortcut key sequence E, S, and L, or Edit Select Line. I use this to pick a row of components that may have others mixed in and around them. As long as I can have a straight line path that intersects just them, it works quite well. While moving groups of objects is very handy, the final placement is often critical. I use a variety of methods depending on the desired outcomes. If a component or a board mounting hole needs to be at a fixed location relative to the origin of the PCB, I select the component and then hit the J followed by the L key. This is a shortcut for jump to location. Now in the pop-up window, enter the desired location coordinates and the component is moved accordingly. Hit return to place it. Let's move some more components out of the way. To help place other components relative to the reference component's location, we would select the group and then we can use the Edit Align option. Using Align to left will align the two power connectors. Now the second connector is lined up on the proper X coordinates but needs to be pulled in closer in the Y direction. Selecting the top connector and starting to move it, we can use the keyboard arrow keys, in this case the down arrow, to gently move the component into place. Align to top looks like this, allowing us to keep the two ground 8-pin connectors aligned. Moving the other two connectors, we can use Align to Right to align them, and then picking the left-right pairs, we use Align Top to move everything into position. This is very handy for linear placement of components or providing regular PCB structures, like aligning parallel drivers, for example. I have used the alignment tool specifically for RF chains in the past. Selecting the pads and the components that are on the same signal path where alignment is important to RF performance. Here's an example of a made-up RF chain to demonstrate this technique for alignment. The desired end result is to have the entire chain aligned starting from the RF chip's output pin through to the BNC. By using a combination of selecting the pad on the chain or the component depending on topology. Now we select the Align Components to Vertical Center. This option requires another click of the mouse to provide the center for the vertical alignment. Here we pick the BNC pad, assuming that this component needs to be fixed for the case opening. As you can see, this aligns the signal path as intended. While placement of critical components that must be fixed due to, say, an interface with an opening to a case, how do we protect them from accidentally being moved? Altium has a locking feature to provide just that protection. To lock the position of the BNC component, select it, and in the Properties window, click on the Open Lock symbol in the Location section to lock the component. One thing to note, selection of locked components requires either the mouse rectangular selection method or a quick double click. If you try to move a locked component either directly by selecting it or as a group, Altium will display a warning box. This will allow a locked component to be moved while still giving the user the heads up regarding the move affecting a locked component. Looking back at the WC Topping PCB, we can use the component interconnections as a built-in guide for placement and orientation of components. You can see the light lines connecting the pins and pads showing the designer what the interconnection topology looks like. The View Connections feature is normally enabled by default, but if it is not, simply click on the View pull-down menu and navigate to the Connection sub-menu. Here we see a few options, three for showing and three for hiding connections. Selecting the Hide All turns them all off, and of course, Show All turns them all back on. While these are nice to have, it can be a little cluttered, one option that is helpful is the hide net selection. I use this on power and ground nets to clear up some of the fly line clutter. Simply click on the pads or pins to hide their associated nets. 
Turning on a single or a couple of component connections is useful when placing and orienting a component to reduce the crossover traces. Starting in the Hide All Net State, select View, Connections Show Component Nets, and then click on the component or components to show their connections. As with most Altium modes, hitting Escape or right-clicking will leave the current mode. In this case, selecting Nets to Hide. Sometimes rotating a component would make a difference for the routing, so let's go ahead and start to move it, tapping the spacebar to get the best layout orientation. So far, all we have placed are components on the top layer. To move a component from the top to the bottom, select it, start to move it, and hit the L key. This transposes the part to the other side of the board. I say other side because if the part happened to have been on the bottom side originally, it would be now brought to the top. Note the pads change color to match the new layer they are on. While we have the component selected in the property window up, we could also select the layer from the drop-down menu to bring it back from the bottom to the top. The component can be rotated by entering the desired rotation and degrees in the rotation field. Clicking on the component's reference designator, we can see its properties in the Properties panel. Notice for the bottom components, the mirror checkbox is selected. If we uncheck it, the text looks right to us from the top, but not if we're looking at the bottom from the bottom side. So going into 3D, we cannot see the bottom side through the board. One handy shortcut is V followed by B key sequence. This flips our board. Now we can see the bottom of the board and the text is properly displayed. With Altium's unified data model and integrated tool chain, the designer has the ability to cross-select components from the PC to the schematic and vice versa. We saw this feature in an earlier module, but at this point it bears revisiting. Going to the power supply schematic and checking to ensure that the cross-select mode is enabled, we can select a series of parts starting with a simple click. And then holding the shift key down, we continue to select parts in the order we wish to place them on the PCB. Again, this is important. The selection order drives what is placed when. Moving to the PCB, all the parts are selected and are highlighted in the PCB view. While this group of components are selected, click on the tool's pull-down menu and navigate to the Component Placement, Reposition Selected Components. Now the mouse has the first component selected in the schematic attached to it, ready to be placed. After clicking to place the component, the next sequentially selected component is attached to the mouse, ready to be placed. Continue to place the series of components until finished. This is a great way to use the order of selection in the schematic to drive the placement order in the PCB. I used this when created the PCB placement for the RF chains to streamline the physical placement ordering. Coupled that with the alignment tool we already saw to facilitate the PCB layout gives you much higher quality results as well as is faster. This ends the Altium Designer PCB placement module where we covered the various ways to place and manipulate components using rooms as well as connections. Please do PCB placement exercise.